Hi, I'm Greg Kahn. I am going to go over a must-have data tracking system that I developed a while back. Initially, this was a task management system, but then I realized I could pretty much use it to track any type of data. So this is a user-friendly, intuitive database tracking system. It can be used as a standalone or in a multi-user environment on a server. So without further ado, let me demo this to you. Let me go into my browser, Google Chrome. Let me go to one of my accounts here. I'm going to demo this to you on my laptop, my hard drive, local host. So one thing to note is this is my landing page, and the background can change anytime you go into this landing page. For example, I can refresh this, and voila. So we are going to go to this very top site here. This is my demo site. I'll click here. It's going to bypass the login screen. And that's because a while back I did presentations on the Tableau JavaScript API event listeners. And users wanted to be able to get into the site without having to log in. So they could see samples here on the Tableau JavaScript API event listeners. But our focus today is on the data tracking system. So in order to create a data record, you have to have a category of categories. So let me click here on data and task categories. I already have a bunch of categories here you create a category easy please you just click on add category give it a name a category name a description and click on add categories but I already have all my categories so let's go back to the category listing so when you create a data record the first thing you do is select the category from a drop down and you'll see it here in this order but you can change to that order by clicking on sort category um, it's drag and drop sorting you can drag the category down or up um, but I don't want to change this. I have it the way I want it. So let, now let's go to the current page, the data grid. So you can find it right away because it's in the blue button here among other links. Click here. So the data records are in table view right now. If you want to look at it in a form view in a vertical format, fields in a vertical format for a specific record, just click on view here under form view. I click here. You have your attachments. So here you have my fields here. If you enter a URL, it automatically becomes a link. You can see it, these are links. Um, I can click on it, voila. So this is my very first TikTok video. I did this a couple of days ago. Here I'm playing one-on-one -on -one with my mom. And she gives me a pump fake, I fall for it. And whoa, she makes the shot. Can't believe it, I have my hands over my head. So let me close this. So again, if you enter in a URL, it automatically becomes a link. I have my attachments. I click here. Oh, so here I am coaching volleyball, and we have a timeout. This is my shoe huddle. We have, we're having a shoe huddle. I'll close this guy. You can have PDF. I click here. You can see it. It's This is my resume. Again, this is just a demo site. Um, if it's an image file, I can click here. Oh, voila. So yeah, this is form bill. So the fields are in a vertical format, so it's really easy to see. So let me close this guy. You can filter on pretty much any column here, multiple columns. I have my flyout menu on every single record, something I designed, something I wish I could patent. Uh, uh, pretty cool. So you can have notes in graphics mode. You can have attachments, event logs, event logs. i got to show you this website. Emailing for views. You can see things in form view and read only, which we saw earlier. You can edit in form view and delete in form view, but you can also delete in table view. I can scroll to the very right here, uh, delete a record by clicking on this button. It's going to ask for confirmation, but I do not want to delete this this record, so I'll cancel this out. Um, I, so notice that when I scroll to the very right, these first three columns are frozen, so you can only see what category you're in. You have access to the flyout menus. You have your indicators here, your notifications. So for notifications, you have notes, attachments, event logs, websites. You can you can go to that right here on the flyout menus, or you can see it here. These indicators, you can see it right away that I have a note here. I have an attachment, six attachments, uh, four event logs, and three websites here. So let me quickly go through all of these guys. So. Again, these are indicators. I can see it right away that I have no, a note here. So I click here, and voila, it's in graphics mode. Pretty cool. So you can have embedded videos here. So I coded it so you can have embedded YouTube videos. Um, 
You can have your, you see your attachments here. I can click on it. Um, you have your links here. So your editor looks like this. Um, let me click here. So you can go to Microsoft Word, do your editing there, do a copy and paste into this editor, or you can use these editing features right over here. So for if you want to create an embedded YouTube video, all you have to do, for example, let me just show you one that I already have. Go to this link here. Give it the web address right here. Uh, this text and description here. Um, and I like to check here, open link in new window. Cancel here. So that's all you have to do to create your links or YouTube links too. So if it's a YouTube link, let's go back to the view notes. This is the format you would use and you would have your video ID here. So, and one thing cool about these embedded videos, usually I have how to videos, but this is a demo site. So I just have a bunch of other stuff here. So, so if you click on it, there are no ads. If you click on it and watch it in the embedded video, but you can always go to YouTube by clicking here, but there may be an ad. Um, yeah, so what do I mean by going to a different window um, or tab? If I click here, it goes to a different tab right here. So this is my TikTok. What am I doing here? Mom at 97. So my mom gives me an alley-oop right here. Pretty cool. Um, and she's also giving me an, an assist. So I pass it to my mom. She passes it back to me. I shoot it behind my back. Voila. Pretty cool. So let me close this tab here. So my mom's amazing. And so she started playing tennis at the age of 94. And now she's 97. She got really good in tennis. She plays pickleball. She plays ping pong. She's really good at ping pong. Of course, she plays basketball. Um, what else? She she plays the piano. She's really good with the piano. She has a baby grand piano. So I got her to MetaQuest 3. Uh, so she can play piano vision. Um, she does ballroom dancing. She loves softball, but now she hits with a tennis ball because uh, she's older now. Now she'll be 98 this year. I can't believe it. She's amazing. So, so here again, this is in graphics mode. This is really cool. Uh, for again, if I click here, it's not going to go to an ad. Huh, pretty cool. Let's stop this guy. Um, yeah. So now let's go back to the. Data grid. I can find it right away among other links because it's the blue button. Uh, let's go to attachments. I have six attachments. I can click here. I can go to my file menu and click on attachments, but more than likely you can see it here. It's just going to click here. I have six attachments. Again, if I click on it, I can well, I'll see it here. Voila. So you can you can edit or delete an attachment. Um, you can add an attachment and you can sort drag and drop sorting. So pretty much all my interfaces like websites, like event logs, you have sorting and it's drag and drop. It's easy pleasy to sort your records. Um, let's go back to the past the data grid, the parent page. I can see it right away among other links because it's a blue button. Voila. So what else? Oh, event log. This is a must have. I'm really helpful. So let me click here. I have four event logs, voila. So this is so organized. Imagine, imagine having a several meetings, right? If, if this is broken down into sections here, it's very organized right here. Um, so if you were to enter all your meeting information into one of, let's say, this, any of these text areas. So I have, this is my task data field. Uh, this is my, right here, this is my notes field. Imagine entering your, your all your meetings in here, right? Imagine entering all that. And we can look at this in form view. This would be so cluttered here. It'd be so cluttered. So this is where the event log comes in handy. You can write it in different sections here. So organized. You can see it. Um, again, I can just max here and see it. If you, if you enter in a URL, it automatically becomes a link. Uh, let me show you this in form view. Um, so you can put the date here, the date, the defaults to the, today's date. Again, if you enter a URL, it automatically becomes a link. You can put the number of hours you, ha you had in your meeting, for example, right here. And let's go back to the event log listening. You can see the hours here. You can 
for example, see the date, the day, the month, pretty cool. Um, what do I have here? These are my TikTok stuff. Um, um, Tableau Public. That's um, pretty much pretty cool. So again, this is it shows the total number of hours you have right here. It totals these hours, and you have a dashboard. So let me click here. Pretty close. Cool. So you have a dashboard. So this dashboard, this is uh, this is April right here of 2018 february march of 2024 you can see you can do trend analysis on your meetings here um you have your spreadsheet you can export it to various formats such as word um i have excel powerpoint pdf and print it out as well this is reporting services pretty cool event log is a must have it makes things really organized because you can do let's say again you have all these events or meetings for a specific data record so let's go back to the data grid so I can find it right away because it's a blue button among all these other links here. So here, what else do I have? Oh, websites. So all this is, is these are just websites. Here, you can, there are links and give it a description. Um, just Instagram. So this, I recently created an uh, Instagram page here. Right here, you can see it. Voila. Instagram. Um, my Instagram page. Let's close this guy. So let's go back to the data grid. I can find it right away because it's in a blue button. So I pretty much covered all the notifications. Um, what do I have here? What if, is there anything to show you here? Oh, let me just show you. Um, yeah, let me show you this here. Let's go here and email emailing. So with emailing, you can. You know, you can attach a file by clicking here, choose file. You have your attachments here. Let's say I, I don't want to see this guy. I don't want to see this guy. And I don't want to see this guy. You can do stuff like that. Or you can uncheck everything. And you might say, oh, I just want to see my this, this, and this right here. And I click here and then click on send email. That's it. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's go back to the task data grid, the parent page. Um, so I have my horizontal scroll bar up here. This is something I coded. By default, the horizontal scroll bar is on your grid on the bottom, but I like it to have it also on top. It makes things really easy to navigate. Um, so it's easy to find a record or records. You can filter on pretty much any column or multiple columns at a time. So for example, let me just click on uh, Wonder Years. Um, let me look for that. Wonder, good enough. And press enter. It gets my Wonder Year records. Um, now, the code. So once I filter on on records, I can I can export it to Excel and PDF. So notice when I filter in, I can I filter it on anything that contains right here. But you can there's so many different types of filters. But I default it to contains uh, because I I use that the most. So it's anything that contains in this case Wonder. Um, yeah, so again, you can filter and then export it to Excel PDF. And one thing to note, if I save my grid state, go to the top menu bar, click here. So what do I mean by that? If I move off the page, for example, if I come here, click, I have a note here, I click on that, I want to see that, and voila. And so this, in this note, it says no ads if you have embedded videos. That's why I see this happy smiley face. So let me go back to the data grid and notice it remembers my filtered grid state. So if I even move off the page completely, go, let's go home. I need to do some data analysis. So I click here for data analysis. Uh, let's look at this in, in a vertical stack bar. This is a Telerec dashboard. So this is my grid. So one thing really cool about Telerec dashboards, if you filter on your grid here, your graph is going to be reflective of what you filtered on. And these are interactive graphs or dashboards, right? I can, for example, I can click here. You can see it here. And I click here and it's adding it right here. You can select, you can see what I selected. I click here, it, it's totaling it. I can subtract it by clicking here again, it subtracts it. So you can interact with your graph in using Telerik components and also in Tableau as well. So let me go back home. Let's go back to the data grid. 
click here and it remembers my filter grid state pretty cool so if you want all your records back easy please you just click on reset grid state and I get all my records back remember when you're done to click on reset grid state because if you let's say leave the data tracking system come back the next day uh, you might say where why do I have only three records right because you forget to click on reset grid sync, then you would just click on reset grid sync. But if you're not going to move off the records, and for example, if I'm filtering on something, like a filter on, I want to get all my how to videos, wow videos, my MetaQuest 3 videos, I filter on that, and I want all my records back, I can click on reload. So you would do that if you're not going to move off the page, right? You can do that. Um, so so you, can, you can pretty much filter on multiple, multiple columns here. And then click on the breaking filter one at a time because you may be slicing and dicing records or doing analysis on your data. Um, but if you want all your records back, easy please, you just click on reload right here. So what I'm oh and you can group your 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 fields here. For example, I can go to my category field right here, just drag it over here, and it groups it by category. Pretty cool pretty slick so if you want it to go back to the way it was back to normal just click on this X and voila we have it back to normal oh to add a record to add a data record just come up here to the top menu bar click on add right here again remember I first thing you do is select the category and you can change this order if you want by going to the category sorting interface you have your task data your notes your resolution status Pending, completed, ongoing, not applicable. Level of importance, high, medium, low, not applicable. Again, this was a task management system initially, but you can pretty much use it to, to track any type of data. So you have your attachments here if you have any. Um, you have other stuff here, and then you would click add. So let's go back to the task data grid. That's how you would add a record. Um, to edit a record, easy, please just click on it. For example, this is a text area area i have three urls here so you see the links here right here you can click on it for notes and resolution i made it so that for example this has two urls here so you see it here it's link one and two you can hover over it to see the link pretty cool and for let's say category if let's say you may you selected the wrong category you can change it here by clicking here um and then this is a drop down of all the categories and you could then select the right category. So you can have combo boxes, uh, radio buttons. So combo boxes, a combination of where you can enter text and have a drop down. In this case, I would not want a combo box because I want to make sure I'm selecting from the category table. I do not want to enter text and enter a category that's not in the category table. So that's why I only have a drop down here. So you would select the right category and then make sure once you're done, click on save changes so i pretty much covered the basics here i'll oh, just to let you know so this is youtube you're probably wondering what this is how to use this so if it's a youtube category what do i have here dad versus christian me versus my son you can click here youtube and it's going to go to my video interface so you can click here if you click if you watch the video um from the embedded video here uh, no ad, pretty cool. Um, you can search your video here, right here, do a search or search by emojis right here. I can go to volleyball, I can go to basketball, um, I can go to fishing, so that's how that works. So let me close this guy. Um, did I cover pretty much everything here? So if you're, if this is an emoji user environment and you're an admin or super admin, you can look at other users data read only because you may be a project manager right and you can look at other users here oh one thing before i show you that um, so you can prioritize your your records here or sort your records here like you can have sorted pretty much on all the interfaces like websites event logs attachments so here you can also sort your records so this was initially was a task management system and my priorities would change my task task priorities would change i would come up here sort prioritize and if this is drag and drop sorting i can move things around i would put my most important prioritized task on the very top right here and voila so this is easy pleasing on sorting your record 
records or prioritizing your records. Let me go back to the task data grid. So the reason why I wanted to talk about that, so if I come here, let's say I need to, um, I'm a project manager. I want to see what Stephen Curry has been doing. More than likely, Stephen Curry prioritized his projects and put his most important projects to the very top. And I am seeing how he's done here on his project. I'm a project manager. I project manage, let's say, a lot of people here. I just don't have time to meet with everybody. Let's say it's it's 3 a.m. in the morning and Stephen Curry is probably asleep. He's probably asleep here. This is his 99th gesture in basketball. Um, so yeah, he's asleep, but I need to know the status of his projects, his most important projects. Um, there's a level of importance here. Here I have not applicable, but it could be high, medium, low. Again, I have my flyout menus right here. Um, there's four attachments. He has four attachments here. I can go to that. And for example, just look at what he has here and his attachments. Um, so you can do stuff like that. So let's close this guy here. Uh, and yeah, so let's go back to the task data grid so one thing to note you could only do this if you are a super admin or admin so in here i am let's go back home i am a super admin meaning that so under the security header here i can i can add a user and i can change the rights and rows i can add a user create new or make them super admin or a non-admin for example so so Jessica Alba and Stephen Curry are non-admins. So let me go in as Stephen Curry. Uh, let me log out of here. So I'm going to go in as Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry with the user ID and password. Log in. And notice that he does not have access to add a record here and change rights here. You don't see that link here. If I go to the his tracking system, I'm Stephen Curry now. I do not see that drop down where I can look at other users' data that are using the data tracking system. So let me just log out of here, go back to, as a Tableau user, which is a super admin. This is a demo site, remember? So if you click here for auto login, you go in as a Tableau user. And notice it says, good morning, Tableau user. Again, right here under security, I see the link now because I'm super admin. I can add users and change their roles and rights. Um, I, if I go to the data task tracking system, I get my drop down. I can see it here because I am a super admin. Again, a non-admin would not be able to see this here. Um, did I cover pretty much everything here? Um, so let's go back home. I covered the basic stuff here. So for dashboards, I use Tableau, Telerik, and reporting services. So let me show you an example using Tableau. So I'll click on this first guy here. So I am getting my data here from Tableau Public. This is test data, non-sensitive data, dummy records. So I can select objects, for example, using Tableau JavaScript API event listeners. You can see the selected objects here. I get my ins and outs. I can drill down. Voila, I get my word cloud. So I can, here's my selected objects. I can select objects here, get my ins and outs or categories here. So you can interact with your dashboard using Tableau, using the Tableau JavaScript API event listeners. So let's close this guy. Now let's go home up. And you can add, you can create dashboards using reporting services. Let me show you an example. This is my landing page. Let me click here on the second site here. So this is a login. So notice it says here, I'm using .NET MVC C Sharp, Visual Studios, Microsoft Visual Studios, and I am using Microsoft SQL Server, which is high-end relational database. So these are Microsoft products. It's gonna be around forever, just like Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, and Microsoft PowerPoint. So the tools I'm using is Tableau. Tableau's backend database is Microsoft SQL Server. I'm using Telerik, which does all these really cool components like the grid component, SSRS reporting services, which I'm about to show you a dashboard and reporting services, and SSIS integrated services. So let me log in with my user ID and password and go here to us an example using reporting service as a dashboard. So in reporting service, you can create really complex reports. You can have sub-reporting and groupings. In this case, these are actually sub-reports right here. 
reports, some reports that I put into a single canvas to create this dashboard. So you can export it to various formats as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, and print it out as well. Pretty cool. I'll show you this. Let me expand this guy so you can see it. So let's close this. I don't need to see this anymore. Let me close this site here. I'll go back to the demo site. So here, what do I have here? I have my resume here. I have a bunch of games I wrote. Four games I wrote here. Um, U.S. map game. So this is something I wrote, developed 20 years ago so that my kids can learn their states and capitals. It has their voices in the game. Uh, celebrity dice game. Celebrity dice game. So I presented this at the UCSF Technology Convention, Sharecase Convention. So users can see how user friendly our interfaces are so if they were to win in this game they would get prizes like t-shirts um, i was sponsored by teller teller is the one that third party too that does all these cool components such as that great component um, they sponsored me with t-shirts and prizes pretty cool i have my, my video interface right here um, so if it's a Embedded video. If I click here, no ads, pretty cool. So you can search your video here or buy emojis, have volleyball, have, have MetaQuest 3, fishing. Um, so, one thing to note about YouTube that I really like about it is you can have timelines. So, what do I mean by that? Let me click on music. I have an example here. Go to Wonder Years. And again, if you click here, no ads. Let me click here and go to YouTube. Know that you so annoying ad right? But down here, let me click on more. You can have timelines. So these are timelines, and there are links, and you can give it a description. You can give each timeline a description, so you can click on that timeline, and it goes to a specific section of your video. Pretty cool. I think that's really helpful. Um, yeah. So YouTube, I, I use it to learn how to how to cook, how to fix my car. I create a lot of narrative videos so users can learn how to navigate through interfaces. So yes, pretty pretty cool. Let's let me go back home. Did I cover everything? So yeah, so this is a, a user-friendly, intuitive data tracking system. You can use it pretty much to track any type of data. I use it to help track my mom's my mom's PG&E, her Schwab, her BFA, her health information my health information uh, my accounts so it's so this is a must-have data tracking system so i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching